What are evil spirits? Evil spirits are referred to in both the Old and New Testaments but are often called by other names such as unclean spirits or impure spirits, deceiving spirits or lying spirits, demonic spirits, and demons. In all cases, evil spirits are malevolent supernatural beings. Evil spirits work against God, but the Bible also informs us that God in his sovereignty can choose to use evil spirits to carry out his plans and purposes, demonstrating that he is ruler over all the universe. The Bible does not reveal the origin of evil spirits. They are most likely angels who fell with Satan, Matthew 25 41, Revelation 12 7 9. While evil spirits exist as part of the hierarchy of evil, Ephesians 6:12, with Satan as their leader, Matthew 12:24, they are powerless to withdraw entirely from God's rule. Most of the evil spirits mentioned in the Old Testament were sent from God as a punishment on disobedient humans, 1 Kings 22:20-23. 20 in Judges 9:23, an evil spirit was used by God to judge Abimelech and avenge the murder of Gideon's sons. God is not the author of evil but he can allow evil powers, subject to his control, to bring about certain consequences in accordance with his plan. The Lord sent an evil spirit to show that he had rejected Saul as king. The evil spirit caused Saul to experience fits of temper and despair, now the spirit of the Lord had left Saul, and the Lord sent a tormenting spirit that filled him with depression and fear. Some of Saul's servants said to him, a tormenting spirit from God is troubling you, 1 Samuel 16 14-15, NLT. In the New Testament, the term demon is often used interchangeably with evil spirit. These wicked entities defile and bring evil to human subjects. Their intention may be to inflict physical harm, disability, and sickness rather than moral corruption. Jesus Christ cast out evil spirits from people possessed by them and gave his disciples power to do the same in his name. Evil spirits know who Jesus is, and that he will judge and condemn them in the future, Matthew 8 29, Mark 1 24, 5 7. In the end times, many people will be deceived by evil spirits and the false teachings they inspire, 1 Timothy 4 1. The book of Revelation speaks of deceptive evil spirits playing a significant role in the last days, and I saw three evil spirits that looked like frogs leap from the mouths of the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. They are demonic spirits who work miracles and go out to all the rulers of the world to gather them for battle against the Lord on that great judgment day of God the Almighty. Look, I will come as unexpectedly as a thief. Blessed are all who are watching for me who keep their clothing ready so they will not have to walk around naked and ashamed. And the demonic spirits gathered all the rulers and their armies to a place with the Hebrew name Armageddon, Revelation 16 13-16, NLT. In Luke 11 24-26, we come across an example of evil spirits that are associated with moral evil. Jesus tells a parable to illustrate that defeating Satan and casting out evil spirits is not the ultimate goal of the Christian's life. True disciples must do more than merely sweep away unclean spirits. To keep evil from setting up camp in our spiritual houses, we must fill our lives with the good things of God and his kingdom. Evil spirits are never to be regarded neutrally. They are part of Satan's dark forces, enemies of God and his people. Evil spirits promote corruption, malice, and depravity in the world and in humans. They are opposed to God's holiness, goodness, righteousness, light, and love. As the antithesis of the Holy Spirit, evil spirits represent the opposite of God's character, nature, and will. They are hostile to the work of God and Jesus Christ, and believers are always to resist them, be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy the devil prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith. Are demons fallen angels? When exactly God created angels is open for debate, but what is known for sure is that God created everything good because God, in his holiness, 
cannot create something sinful. So when Satan, who was once the angel Lucifer, rebelled against God and fell from heaven, Isaiah 14, Ezekiel 28, one third of the angelic host joined his insurrection, Revelation 12 3 4, 9. There is no doubt these fallen angels are now known as the demons. We know that hell was prepared for the devil and his angels, according to Matthew 25 41, then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Jesus, by using the possessive word his makes it clear that these angels belong to Satan. Revelation 12 7-9 describes an end-times angelic battle between Michael and his angels and the devil and his angels. From these and similar verses, it is clear that demons and fallen angels are synonymous. Some reject the idea that the demons are the fallen angels due to the fact that Jude verse 6 declares the angels who sinned to be bound with everlasting chains. However, it is clear that not all of the angels who sinned are bound, as Satan is still free, 1 Peter 5 8. Why would God imprison the rest of the fallen angels, but allow the leader of the rebellion to remain free? It seems that Jude verse 6 is referring to God confining the fallen angels who rebelled in an additional way, likely the sons of God incident in Genesis chapter 6. The most common alternate explanation for the origin of the demons is that when the Nephilim of Genesis 6 were destroyed in the flood, their disembodied souls became the demons. While the Bible does not specifically say what happened to the souls of the Nephilim when they were killed, it is unlikely that God would destroy the Nephilim in the flood only to allow their souls to cause even greater evil as the demons. The most biblically consistent explanation for the origin of the demons is that they are the fallen angels, the angels who rebelled against God with Satan.